may now be understood as a Masonic hailing sign signifying a special meaning known only to Freemasons. Because he is the most recognizable, most well-known, and most popularly liked of all of them, George Washington is seen as the preeminent Masonic president. However, in truth, he is not the only U.S. president to have been a Freemason. No fewer than ten presidents, including Washington, have been confirmed to non-initiates as having been free and accepted Masons. Washington was first, but not last, among a long line of presidents who had advanced into Blue Lodge Masonry, most of whom went further on into the upper-level degrees of the York or Scottish Rites. Also, all of these presidents are distinguished in another way, which I will discuss more about soon, and that is that they all opposed central banking. The 33rd U.S. President, Harry Truman, is shown here in April and Jewel holding a gavel. There is every reason to believe, and very little reason to doubt, that all of the greatest men whose minds shaped the course of American politics between the eras of Washington and Truman were free and accepted Masons. Washington's being a Freemason seems to have set the standard that all ranking members of highest political offices must belong also to this popular esoteric order. The nature of Freemason remains, to this day, a secret society. However, many, if not most, of its so-called secrets are available in public publications and can be known even by a non-Mason often more easily than even by some Masons. The doors seen in this picture leading to the inside of the Washington, D.C. Scottish Rite Temple conceal many secrets, but most of them are about the men who were Freemasons in the past and are only secrets because they would prove slightly controversial if revealed as being true instead of the official stories taught to and accepted by children as schoolbook history. There is, in short, nothing all too shocking behind the lodge door of Freemasonry. To scale the three steps up and to knock on the door is all that is required to gain entrance, because to become a Mason, all one must do is to ask a Mason how to do so. Once one is sponsored by a brother Mason, one is asked three questions. That is all it takes to qualify for the initiation ritual. However, because there is a reenactment of a death scene participated in by the blindfolded candidate of the third degree ritual, Freemasonry is often misunderstood as teaching a dark-oriented or death-centered occultism. Nothing, to my experience, could be further from the truth. All the Masons I know now and have ever met are good men whom Masonry makes better and are bound to keep secret only the topics they discuss in private within the Lodge with other Masons. The teachings of Freemasonry are inherently good, being based on a study of the working craft tools of the stone Masons who built the first temple in Jerusalem, overseen by King Solomon, son of King David. The concept of the divinity of monotheisms as the grand architect of the universe, the G in the square and compass symbolizing both God and geometry, precludes no other faiths from joining and excludes no one who believes in any form of higher power or deity. Besides dressing up in costumes, which would be difficult to explain the meanings of to children who might think them silly looking, Masonry conceals no secrets for which any Mason could truly be ashamed for keeping. While the costumes worn by the Masons in a lodge working any given initiation degree level ritual may change over time, the basic principles of free and accepted Masonry do not. The three candles on the checkered floor and the altar with the Bible on it are the most important working symbols of craft Freemasonry's alphabet of speculative philosophical tools. 
The altar signifies the candidate's soul as a rough ashlar they must work to make perfect. The three candles on the checkerboard signify the fellowship of other Masons in a democratic system as the method of accomplishing this. Such is the meaning of the true and Masonic triumvirate conspiracy. Considering that so many of the greatest free thinkers among the most well-known and liked leaders of men have all belonged to the same cult of Freemasons and had access to the same libraries of documents kept available only to Freemasons, it should come as no huge surprise to learn many men from Isaac Newton to Neil Armstrong, have all been high-degree initiate Freemasons of their day. To become a Mason, ask a Mason how to do so. By this simple method has this brotherhood been promulgated across many ages and eras until it has reached even this modern day. If you want to learn more about the impact of Freemasonry on the free thinking of the U.S. Founding Fathers, Simply ask any U.S. Mason for an answer, and they will tell you truly, too. Past Politics 101-D Masons on Money The first U.S. President, George Washington, was a Freemason. Benjamin Franklin and other founding fathers of the Democratic Republic government of the USA were Freemasons too. Although this picture of Franklin in Masonic garb might be a forgery from a picture of Marquis de Lafayette, another revolutionary era Freemason of both the U.S. and France, friend of both Franklin and Washington, the fact many of the Founding Fathers were Freemasons cannot be denied. Theodore Teddy Roosevelt, the 26th President of the USA, was a Freemason. For his role in government funding nature conservatories, buying up large masses of scenic rural landscapes, Teddy Roosevelt's face was carved onto Mount Rushmore in the Black Hills region of the Cheyenne and Lakota tribes of Native Americans. Roosevelt's face appears here between those of Abraham Lincoln to the right and Thomas Jefferson to the left and all are lined up to the right of George Washington on the far left. As shown in the last lecture also, 33rd U.S. President Harry Truman was a Freemason. Truman was the president who staged the fake Japanese suicide bombing mission on Pearl Harbor Air Base in order to provoke the U.S. into entering World War II and he was the president who ordered U.S. soldiers into war against the Nazis. Not all Freemasons might agree on all political topics. It is this natural disparity of political ideologies between brothers in the Lodge that allowed the doctrines and dogma of the Illuminati conspiracy to penetrate the depths of Freemasonic Lodges. Although many brother Freemasons are now members of the Illuminati conspiracy, not all are and not all would want to be, even if they knew they could. The Illuminati, some of whom are also brothers in Freemasonic lodges, have conspired for the past century to control the currency of the United States dollar, and have accomplished this by using the Federal Reserve privately owned Central Bank of the Federal Government of the USA to transform the fixed value of gold as a solid form of currency into the fluid exchange rate of liquid fiat paper cash. Ironically, the Illuminati behind the Federal Reserve have traditionally placed the faces of their enemies onto this worthless paper cash and coinage. Thus we have the modern expression, dead presidents, for our money, and the slang, chasing Benjamins, for the capitalist act of acquiring money. This placement of presidents as a place of honor onto this funny money being counterfeited on the mint's printing press by the laundry racket called the Federal Reserve is an illusion meant to keep us addicted to seeing worthless paper cash as symbolic of real value. We have already established that George Washington, 
whose face we see here on the front of the one dollar bill, was a Freemason. On the back of the one dollar bill, opposite the side with President Washington's face, we find the great seal of the United States meant to never be used in vain. The fact that President Washington was a Freemason alone does not necessarily account for how he wound up with his face on our current form of money, but it's definitely a good start. All the Mason presidents on our cash have opposed the idea of allowing the USA to have a central bank. For this reason, all of their faces appear on our paper cash. Consider next our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln, whose face appears on the $5 bill. Abraham Lincoln's statue in the Lincoln Memorial sits facing west toward a stele at sunset, symbolizing Anubis, the ancient god of death and holder of the keys to the underworld. Lincoln may or may not have been a Freemason of any kind. However, if we are to seriously consider him one also, then Lincoln's assassin, John Wilkes Booth, must also be considered one as well. Here we see Booth concealing his hand and his jacket in the standard Masonic hand sign of the master of the second veil. Here we see that founding father, Alexander Hamilton, whose face appears on the $10 bill Federal Reserve note. The seventh U.S. President, Andrew Jackson, whose face appears on the $20 bill Federal Reserve note. The Civil War commander and the 18th president, Ulysses S. Grant, whose face appears on the $50 bill Federal Reserve note. We're all Freemasons, and we're all opposed to the notion of a U.S. central bank, and all have faces that now appear on the same U.S. central bank's funny money. Benjamin Franklin, whose name appears on the $100 bill Federal Reserve note, was a founding father of American Democratic Republican government and a Freemason. Benjamin Franklin was a U.S. diplomat and, as such, was able to serve also as a courier between prominent Freemasons in different distant countries of timely Masonic communiques. As a spy, Benjamin Franklin was for American Masonry what Dr. John D. was for HMSS, pre-Scotland Yard, pre-MI6, British Intelligence. Although this picture with Benjamin Franklin dressed in Masonic garb in it may be a fake based on an identical earlier painting of Marquis Lafayette from the same time period, there is no question that Benjamin Franklin was a Freemason for contributing the Illuminati symbolism that formed the U.S. Great Seal, Benjamin Franklin is honored by having both his diagrammatic invention and his own visage appear on our worthless fiat paper cash. Abraham Lincoln, symbolizing both Anubis, Egyptian god of the dead, and Moses, the Hebrew prophet who freed his people from slavery to the pharaoh of Egypt, appears on the penny, the coinage equivalent of George Washington on the paper dollar, as being the most common and worth least amount of money in circulation. On the back of the Lincoln head penny is depicted the Lincoln Memorial. As also mentioned above, the Lincoln Memorial is designed to resemble the architecture of the Temple to Zeus and the Greek Acropolis to their Olympic pantheon. The Lincoln Memorial is designed to symbolize the death of Zeus in exchange for the freedom of the Egyptian slaves, enacted in his life by President Lincoln's setting the African slaves in America free with the Emancipation Proclamation, followed by his being assassinated by a bullet in the brain by Southerner John Wilkes Booth. Thomas Jefferson's face appears in profile facing the opposite direction as Lincoln on the U.S. five-cent nickel coin 